I call the uh, Sanborn Regional School Board meeting to order. Uh, I'll stand for the pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of, of the United, United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we have a new board member here with us tonight. Uh, this is Ken Hamilton. We want to give him a nice, warm welcome. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if there's, uh, not to put you on the spot, if there's anything you'd like to say, go for it. And if not, we can move right on. <laughs> oh, just thanks for the opportunity. I hope to contribute positively very quickly to the board. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Um, so on anything that you like, so we're going to do the minutes. Mm -hmm. um, you can abstain from that because you weren't here or meeting unless you watched it and you feel comfortable saying yes, but you don't appear to have a Chromebook yet. So you probably haven't reviewed them. So not. you could just abstain from that vote. Okay. <laughs> so anything like that, that you don't feel like you just have, abstain, just abstain. Yep. Absolutely. Um, okay. So do I have any action of the minutes for June 21st, 2023? I make a motion to approve. Second. Great. Thank you. Uh, any comment? All right. All in favor. So we have one, two, three, four, five in favor. And I abstain. Abstention. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, manifest manifest documents are going around. Maura's got the huge stack right now. Um, so get ready to sign and have your hand cramp. Um, it takes a while. <laughs> yeah, it takes a while. It's all this on the manifest. Um, <laughs> Tom, nomination have a lot this evening as we did summer hiring. So many of the resignations that were read this spring were hired over the summer. So I'll try to read these. Uh, can folks hear me okay? Um, first, district-wide, we have a social worker, Kara Prawl. Um, fourth grade teacher, Aaron Brennan the Memorial School. Fifth grade teacher, Susan Dubina. Fifth grade teacher, Elizabeth Locke. Uh, fifth grade teacher, Robert O'Neill. Reading specialist, Margaret Miller third grade teacher, Kristen Silverman, and music teacher, Catherine Walden. And I just wanted to note that uh, it's not a new hire, but uh, um, our wonderful music teacher, uh, Chris Vinciguerra, has stepped up to the middle school and transferred to run yes. the middle school music program in light of a resignation that we were very sad about this spring. So I couldn't be happier that Chris, Chris I, I can't wait to work with Chris this year on middle school music. It's going to be fun. That's awesome. um, at the middle school, we have school counselor, Kathleen Brin. Seventh grade science, Sarah Elliott. Seventh grade STEM, Nicole French Wollen. Sixth grade science, Melissa Hewson. Special education teacher, Sharon Valdez. English teacher, Ann Epperson. English teacher, oh, I'm sorry, at the high school, English teacher, uh, Ann Epperson. English teacher, uh, Crystal Hatsamanolis. And special education building coordinator, John McCarthy. And uh, I did also want to note that uh, Mr. Hatsamanolis, the special education social worker, is going to be taking a guidance position in the guidance office to fill an opening there as well. So we'll have some more openings coming up. So will we be looking for a special ed guidance now? Social worker. Social worker, yep. yeah. Yes. That concludes the nominations. I make a motion to approve. Yay. <laughs> second. Great. Yeah. All right. So more got the second on that one. OK, great. Um, all in favor? You can if you would like to. Nope, sure. Absolutely. All right. Unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, resignations. We have a few. Um, Julianne Herrick, school nurse at Bakey School. Bay Brown, third grade teacher. Kyra Butts, teacher support special education. Sue Foley Vadaboncourt, third grade teacher. Amber Loans, fifth grade teacher. At the high school, Kevin Bodwin, special education teacher, case manager. Julie Conroe, school counselor and Sean Sullivan, physical education teacher. I make a motion to approve with regrets. Second. All in favor? <clears throat> Unanimous. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, we're going to start the year off with a little bit of a bang. Um, I wanted to kind of take a moment to first welcome everyone to the 23-24 school year. Um, I hope the summer was enjoyable and restful. The start of the school year always brings anticipation and excitement. I look forward to the fall weather, and as many of you, many of you know, I always look forward to the winter. 
and the fun of hitting the slopes with my boys. Um, this fall is particularly bittersweet as my wife, for my wife and I, uh, my oldest son is going to leave for his first year of college. So next Friday is a big day at the Ambrose household. As with many families, as I've noticed on the Kingston and Newton Facebook posts, you know, lots of folks, it's their first time. So I'm, I'm right there with them. Um, nationally, districts do continue to struggle with staffing. We're in a much better position than other districts. And despite having a fantastic new hires, we still had to shuffle to fill some staff openings. And some of the folks that were going to work in intervention at Memorial will be teaching in uh, third, fourth, or fifth grade. And we do have some applicants and some last minute hiring going on. So we're hoping we're, we're fully staffed for classroom positions now, but we definitely had to uh, uh, make some moves at the end to make things work. Just want to thank our principals for working so hard to do so much when the there is a very small candidate pool statewide and in the nation right now for teaching. Um, this year, our focus is clear. So as a community, we need to work together to improve student achievement in all subject areas. We've adopted new programs in reading for grades K through five called CKLA Amplify, and we'll be working to solidify the implementation of the K through Algebra two curriculum. We need your help as parents and community members, and we need the staff and everyone to work together if we're going to achieve our goals. Last year in the third grade, 48% of students were at grade level in mathematics. 42% were in grade level for ELA. In fourth grade on the state assessment, 48% of our students were at grade level in mathematics, and 45% were at grade level for ELA. In fifth grade, 34% were at grade level for mathematics, 48% in ELA, and 26% in science. Sixth grade on the state assessment, 31% were at grade level in math, and 47% were at grade level in ELA. In seventh grade for math, 44% were at grade level, and 50% were at grade level in ELA. Um, eighth grade, I met with the teachers in eighth grade because they had an exceptional year. They worked really hard. They, moved, they had 37% of their students at grade level in math, but in ELA, they had 64%. So they moved at 20 percentage points. <clears throat> and in science, they doubled the scores of the previous year to 42%. Certainly, that's not where we want things to be, but it's a huge gain. What was the math for eighth again? 37%. Uh, Thank you. ELA was 64%, and science was 42%. In the high school, 34% of our students in science were at grade level, no students above, only proficient. And the SAT reading and writing, 45% were at grade level. Um, the state average was 59%. And the SAT for math, 19% of our students were at grade level. The state average is 35%. So this is what I have to say. I'm inviting everyone in our community, our teachers, no one is okay with this. I have not met any teacher that's okay with this. I want to be clear. We all want this to get better. But it cannot be only the school that does it. We need help. I need parents to help us help their kids. We have to read with kids at night. We have to do math at home. The school cannot do this alone. It has to be a community-wide effort. The only way this is going to get better is if we do the following things. Number one, we have to choose and implement a rigorous curriculum. We have to have assessments that are rigorous and aligned with our state assessments. We have to do something about it when students don't meet those assessments in real time. We can't wait six months to help a kid that's behind. We have to help them when it happens. So if our local assessments aren't as rigorous as the state assessments, Students will pass classes but do poorly on state assessments. That has to change. And finally, we have to take all of that information and work collaboratively as a community to help our kids learn and to impress upon them that the world that they will face will require three things of them. They will have to be able to read for understanding. They will have to be, be able to do calculations to solve problems so that they can, at the very least, understand the complexities of modern finance. And they will have to be able to share information in written form, especially in the era of email and text messaging. If we don't teach these kids these things, it's on us. So I'm asking everyone to focus on the problem. 
The problem in our community is our students' performance in school. Let's focus on fixing that. If we all rally and work really hard, we can do way, way better. And I'm inviting everyone to help, anyone who wants to help. Um, we will be focusing this year on improving student achievement. We'll take a close look at our instructional practices. We will improve instruction to help our students to read, perform calculations effectively, and think critically. We'll be focusing on teaching word-solving strategies, vocabulary comprehension, predicting, inferencing, and other strategies for learning. Principals will be attending PLC meetings to engage in conversations to support the use of data to make instructional decisions. It is important to remember that teaching to a test is not the goal. If we teach students the skills they need to be successful, the test scores will improve organically. I know none of us are comfortable with this data, and I know that everyone wants to work hard to support the success of our students. And honestly, I'm really excited about the direction that the board has taken to move this forward. You chose a really rigorous K-5 reading program. Christine has been working nonstop, canceled her family vacation, she has been at the SAU office every day all summer to make sure that the 1,200 boxes. Well, that makes me sad. That I, I, I asked her not to. That was her choice. I, I begged her not to. But I have to, put the, I have to say, I, you need to hear how hard she's worked. 1,200 boxes of materials have been parsed out and delivered to teachers. And, and teachers know that the expectation is that we are going to teach this curriculum with fidelity, word for word, unit by unit and then we'll assess whether or not it helped our kids move in three years, <clears throat> because it takes three years to implement a curriculum. Year one, there's an implementation dip. You're learning the curriculum. Year two, you kind of know what's coming. And year three, you hit it out of the park because you really know what's going on. So three, three to four years is what this is gonna take. This is not an easy fix, but we should see gains quickly if students are learning about phonics, sight words, and vocabulary, because they're all simple problems that we can fix just by engaging with kids. I ask all of our teachers, please be talking with kids about their reading, talking with them about their writing. I ask all of our parents, read with your kids and talk to them about their reading. You can do so much with so little, just 20 or 30 minutes a day makes a huge difference in a student's performance academically. Just talking to them about their grades and watching their grades and talking to them regularly and talking to their teachers shows kids that school is important. So our teachers will, 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 will get whatever help they need. We're going to help them. We just need everyone to focus on this. This is the enemy. I've named it. I need your help. And that's the tone of the year, is we're all in this together. That's the message. All right? So thank you so much. And uh, um, I can't wait for this year. And I thank the board for all their hard work to select this great curriculum. Christine is going to be bringing you some science curriculum to help with those science scores at the high school level. And she's also going to be really focused on making sure that we're working doubly hard to make sure that the math curriculum is being followed right to the T. All right? Thanks, everyone. It's nice to be back. I missed you all. Great. Um, do we have any subcommittee reports? I mean, that tonight? Substantial. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, our student council representative is not here tonight. Um, so we will move on to first public comment. Bueller. <laughs> Bueller. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. New business. So um, what time is it? It's not quite time yet. Okay. So at 630, we have to go into the public hearing. But um, if the board does not mind, um, in ISA today, we um, we had brought to us for the class of 2024. Um, they're the last class potentially that will have the option to receive a diploma with distinction. We're going to just, we're looking to change the name of it um, and, you know, the criteria a little bit um, potentially. So they're just asking because students need to know what they can potentially get for a diploma at the end of this year, and they have to start signing contracts the first two weeks of school, so this needs to be done tonight if we accept it. Um, so they're just asking um, 
that um, to receive the diploma with distinction, they're proposing the following. Uh, 28 credits plus New Hampshire scholars, or, so it's an either or, like you either get 28 credits in New Hampshire scholars, or if you get 28 credits in summa cum laude, which is the verbiage is gonna change for um, grade point average. Um, so it's not gonna be like honors, high honors. It's going right. to be summa cum laude, which is a 3.8 or higher, uh, magna cum laude, which is a 3.4 to a 3.7, or cum laude, which is a 3.0 to a 3.3. We're trying to kind of align everything so there's less confusion with multiple terms for this and that. We're trying to streamline everything. Um, so it would be that, so for context, the class of 2024 needs 26 credits to graduate. Um, diploma with distinction in the past has been, you need 32 credits. Um, and then there were specific, there were specific criteria you had to meet within those 32 credits. You only were required to get 28 to graduate. So because of the shift from the eight period day to the six period day, they're just asking that we allow the seniors graduating this year to um, receive the diploma with distinction with those new criteria, the 28 credits in the New Hampshire Scholars or the 28 credits in the Summa Cum Laude. Please help if I so did not explain there's that. there's essentially two pathways. So yes. a, a student can graduate with 28 credits and be a New Hampshire scholar, or they can graduate with 28 credits and be a summa cum laude. To um, get the diploma. To get their diploma. So th those are our new going to be diplomas with distinction, but we're getting rid of some of that terminology. Right. We're going to gonna, gonna just replace it with some different verbiage um, moving forward. <laughs> um, but we're just asking that we can. But for tonight, we're just specifically For tonight, we are just specifically asking for year. this year, for the class of 2024, that that would be the criteria to be met to graduate with a diploma with this. Are you okay with those two pathways? Are you asking them to do a motion? And we need to approve Oops. it so that they can put it into effect because yep. they have to be able two to additional credits. contracts. Yes. Well, I'm glad I so, went it, I, so a 26, <laughs> they can graduate with 26, yes. but if they want to get New Hampshire scholars okay. or summa cum laude, they have to have the 28. So, so diploma with distinction was always you only needed 28, but you had to get 32 to be distinction. But because you can't meet that mark anymore, they're asking that we. So now we're saying it's two additional plus this yes. or plus that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And there's certain classes for New Hampshire Scholar that they would take yeah. versus the like. So there's it's it's basically just different pathways. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, like it. I think my big point would we're not lowering the bar. No. It's just because of the question. way this like and. And Was so there, moving forward, so we're only asking for the vote for this coming school year because that will be, I th so I think the following classes, it will have all cycled out with the credit mm. changes, if I'm correct. So we're just talking about for this year. For the class and then in the, in the future, there'll be another conversation. But um, that conversation will be just changing the words. So we're still going to have, people will still be recognized. It just won't be just... Um, Diploma with distinction. Diploma anymore. with distinction. It'll, have different It'll be something different, but we're not getting rid of that. So, yeah. So tonight we're just asking: Are we okay with just um, changing the criteria from 32 down to 28, with the addition of earning New Hampshire scholars or summa cum laude and a base graduation at 26? Right. Base, yeah. Was there a GPA requirement with the 32 before? Um, they just had to pass. So I like with this, there's a GPA huh. required. Yeah, I like this better. Yeah. Right? Quality, not quantity. Mm -hmm. So. So, Don, just so that I'm clear, the, the driving factor for this is the uh, the period, the period changes yes. for this year. From eight down to six. Right. For, well, from last year and this year. Gotcha. So it makes it hard. They cannot. They cannot meet the 32 credits. Understood. Yeah. Impossible. And I like the I like the alignment with uh, collegiate language mm -hmm. that goes to what we're heading towards, right? Which is yep. a, which is what we see as a school board, our students doing here in Sanborn, which is which is achieving and high achieving, right? So I'm I'm fully in favor. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve class of 2024 dual pathways for graduation, a uh, base graduation of 26 credits to graduate with either 28 credits in New Hampshire scholars or 28 credits summa cum laude. For the diploma with distinction. For the diploma with distinction. Second. Perfect. 
Great. All right. Any discussion? Further discussion? <laughs> no? All right. All in favor? All right. Unanimous. Thank you all for allowing us to add that. It's just Thank you. Yeah. Time sensitive. We have a lot to take yes. in. And so I, I said, when do we need it? And they I said, know. well, just the first two it. School, we love it. And contracts. This, and thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So not quite time yet. Seven minutes. Okay. So Matt, what do you think you can do in seven minutes? We do the football boosters in seven minutes. Perfect. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> so um, we received a donation from the football boosters of uh, practice shirts and shorts for use by our football players. Um, and the amount uh, is uh, $2,084.25. This would have otherwise been charged to <clears throat> our athletics budget. So thank you very much to the uh, football athletic boosters. Yeah. Absolutely. Make a motion to accept. Thank you, boosters. Second. Thank you, boosters. <laughs> <laughs> Any other thank yous or comments? <laughs> all right. All in favor? Unanimous. Great. Thank I can probably so knock off the DOE 25 really quickly. Let's go. Okay. So um, <laughs> the DOE 25 is the financial statements of the school district that I have to report to the state of New Hampshire. And it's also the MS-25, the, the DOA-25 goes to the Department of Education, the MS-25 goes to the Department of Revenue Administration. The two important um, groupings of numbers, the first one is on page one, it's the bottom left-hand corner. That's the unassigned fund balance. This is the amount of money <clears throat> that's going to get returned back to the taxpayers. Um, and that's $681,796.72. And then the second grouping of numbers is the absolute bottom of this report on the DOE 25, and that's going to be the um, oh, yeah. estimate, I'm sorry, the cost per pupil and the I cost per, the cost per pupil. I know it's so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> zoom in, zoom in. <laughs> yes. So the cost per pupil is basically current expenditures, less food service revenue, less certain transportation, less some other supplemental costs. And then they, then they apply the average daily membership rather than enrollment, and then they calculate the um, per pupil cost, okay? So I need the school board to sign these, well, first approve them, and then sign them. Okay. Make a motion to approve. Second. All right, any discussion? <clears throat> if they're not comfortable, you can abstain. Okay. Wherever, you're, wherever your comfort level is. Okay. Um, all right, all in favor? Abstain. Okay, so five in favor, and Ken will abstain. All right. All right. All right. Do we want to take a few minutes and sign them? Because we have five minutes. Yeah. Matt, the copies, I, I have <clears throat> copies in Tom's book. Oh, that's in mine? Oh, man, Tom has them. Did we approve okay. both? Just don't give them back. Oh, yeah, did we? Did we do both? Did we do both? Is that cover Does DOE 25 like in it? Yeah, you just proved the DOE 25. The DOE 25? I, it's you, really, yeah, you can approve the other one. Do you want to do the MS 25 too? Might as well I make an approval to approve the MS 25. Second. Great. All right. All in favor? Five in favor. Just two documents. I just sent them in separate directions. Thank you, Matt. All right. Thank you. Do I write my name and then sign or just sign? I always forget. Um, I would just, just sign it. Just sign one side. Jeez, I haven't even gotten through the manifest yet. <laughs> I'm not complaining. All right, and I have to sign. Do you like us to go slower and go longer? Nope. Matt, nope. I, I sign, sign this, sign this on both. I was thinking we could do the non-public in five minutes. Just sign on the top. <laughs> all right, fine. Uh, all right, I'm going to pass that pass. Right, Samara. And, and just to say, this new oh, accounting system. Is it there, or is it? <clears throat> is that both of them, or is that just I was going to just one. The new accounting system, uh, because of it, I'm two weeks ahead. Normally, oh, we wow. approve this. That's good. Um, at the beginning of September. Last year, when Matt rolled the system over, it was the first time that he rolled it over, and so there were lots of you know normal first time implementation glitches, and it's going very well this year. It'll be great to see how things look at mid September, early October, when his team has all the new employees settled and everything done. It's been a huge improvement so far this year. Yes. So you started the new accounting system last summer? Yeah, summer before last. Summer before last. So you've been on it for two years now? We're entering our, we met, uh, yes. 
So we've rolled, but rolling it from one year to the next has only happened one time more. Yep. So even though we've been with it for two years, this right. process has only been done once. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's a, a huge process and it's great. Yes. We were able to automatically load in the contracts this year. It saved weeks of work. <laughs> weeks. It, weeks. Five, by many, many people. We are really excited. Yes. You good? Huh? You didn't have to sign. Thank you. I didn't have to sign up. Thumbs up. <laughs> That's a lot of signing. A lot of signing. <laughs> Here. Okay, we have two minutes. Well, I guess I could uh, open up second public comment. All right. We'll wait for two minutes. Thank you. We'll Somebody for, might come. We can wait for two minutes. The two minute bathroom break. If you, oh, no, don't do that. No, don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I can. I do have a, a show and tell. Oh, okay. Ooh. I like show and tell. All right. So, when um, this is a piece of our fire suppression system. Oh. And um, <laughs> it's it actually. I'm not comfortable <laughs> with the fact that it's here. Yeah. Not in place. Yeah, I know. It's been replaced. It's been replaced. Okay. okay? But that well, shows it's been rotting out. Yep. And I've been talking to the facilities committee about um, the need to um, replace some of the, the pieces. And this shows that the building is 18 years old. It looks amazing, but we have to do maintenance to it. So the building looks amazing, not the piece of the pipe. Yeah. <laughs> Just to be clear, I've seen looking referring to. <clears throat> this was at the top of the auditorium. And right now, if you go in the auditorium, we've taken up um, a row of seats, and there's a big, huge um, man left in there. We we have a new term at the central office between Mr. Rocher and I. It's called Matt Splaining. <laughs> Matt <Matt's laughs> Splaining. I like Sometimes. the show and tell, but I like the visual. Yeah. Usually involves it involves taking a critical piece of equipment and out. I see that. Being <laughs> like, look. It, it it has they um it's been determined that is that the um leak came from the what we call lovingly the greenhouse window yeah which is in the science wing it kind of curves down and out yep. um dan with all the rain this summer dan was able to diagnose a lot more because it was so dry last year okay. so he put uh, a big piece of plexiglass over it mm -hmm. thick plexiglass and it deflected the water nice. and so they they feel confident that that's what it is the question now is we can leave the plexiglass roof there for a year or two but we're going to have to eventually deal with that window on a Okay. But at least the teachers get to keep their 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 nice window that they can grow plants in and use it because it's not. Okay, good to know. And look at that, it's 6.30. 6.30. Perfect timing. Yeah. Okay. All right, you're on. All right. Um, we are receiving $16,737 from the FCC for the E-rate. Basically, the E-rate grant pays for um, broadband service for schools and libraries. Typically, this amount of money is um, is paid directly to our broadband provider. This year, it's being paid directly to us. So I have to set aside, and then we're going to offset our broadband costs with these funds. Okay. Is there a reason they're switching it from? I don't think so. It's kind of it. interesting. Right. Yeah. So this is something that we usually get, but it just comes in way of credit on our bill. Correct. Okay. Are, are, am I inferring apply correct? For this grant? Um, we used to apply for the grant. Um, it's usually done by the broadband. Okay. Uh, I wish yeah. I wanted to acknowledge whoever we should be thanking if someone took this. No. no. Okay. All right. Motion to accept. Second. All right. All in favor? Unanimous. Wow. Okay, look at that. All right, so we're almost there. All right, so the next Sanborn Regional School Board meeting will be held on Wednesday, September 6th, 2023 at 6 p.m. with a public hearing on a donation at 6.30, Sanborn Regional High School Library. And now we will transition into a non-public session. Someone wants to call us in? Move us into non-public under RSA. 91 dash a semicolon three nomen roman numeral two ck second great all right um so we roll call in for this one so i say everybody's name and okay. or i or whatever you'd like to say <laughs> we're pretty lax on that uh 
Jeremiah. Yes. Maura. Yes. Ken. Yes. Self. Yes. Heather. Yes. Micah. Yes. All right. Great. All right. Uh, we'll take a quick five-minute break. Okay. And uh, I haven't stopped since the.